Today we'll tackle the problem on gravity. So take your time to go through the problem, pause, try to draw, try to solve yourself first. And now let's proceed to solving this. So you have star of mass m and you have a star of mass 16m. And the radii are a and 2a. So one fellow has a radius a, that is this guy. This fellow has a radius 2a. Okay, now a small body of mass m is fired straight from the surface of a larger star. So, small mass, small m, toward the surface of a smaller star. So it's fired this way. This way, okay. What should be its minimum initial speed to reach the surface of the smaller star? It means I need to calculate what is the minimum value for v to reach this one. So your answer is going to depend on maybe values of m and a. And yeah, the distance between them, their centers is 10a. So this is given. This distance is 10a. Okay, so what principle are we going to use to solve this question? Well, think about this. We know the expression for escape speed, right? See, escape speed from the surface of this planet, that's going to be the square root of g times m divided by r multiplied by 2. So, 2 to cancels. So, it'll be the square root of 16 gm divided by a. Now that would be the speed with which I have to throw this guy if this fellow was not available so that you know it escapes the gravitational pull, or gravitational tug of this particular planet. However, since this fellow is standing over here, this star is present in our universe, you can pretty much imagine what's going to happen. You see, this fellow doesn't have to go all the way to infinity. He has to come close enough to this star so that its gravitational pull starts dominating. Once it dominates, this fellow will be under the gravity of this guy and then he'll crash into this star. So if you want to do this in the most efficient way possible, then what we, to, what we need to find out is along which point from here to here will the gravity of this star going to start dominating. Once we know that, suppose this is that point somewhere because this is 16m, this is m, I'm pretty sure this will have a huge influence. This will have a smaller influence. Somewhere over here, at some, some point, this fellow will start having, so a little bit towards the left, this guy will have more influence, so more gravitational field. So gravitational field will start pointing this way. So if I could manage to shoot this guy all the way from here to here, so he can reach, if he can just reach over here, then that's it. Then this fellow will take over. I hope you understand the concept, okay? So our first goal is to find out where between this, which is that point where the gravitational field starts getting dominated by this guy. And that is the point where the gravitational fields cancel out. Now think about this. If you are towards the right of this, the field is this direction. If you are towards the left of this, the field is in this direction. That means it's at this point where the field decreases, decreases, becomes zero, and then starts increasing in the opposite direction. So let's say that distance is x. And we need to find out the value for x is that the gravitational field at that point, let me call that point as p. So we want to, we want to find p says that the net gravitational field at p must be zero. Okay, so the gravitational field at p due to this guy in magnitude is going to be g m divided by x squared. And that should be equal to gravitational field due to this guy. That's going to be g into 16 m divided by this distance. Well, that's 10 a minus 10 a minus x the whole squared. So we can take the square root on both sides and cancel out these constants. Oops. Um, g and m, 16 remains. So if I take the square root, I'll get 1 over x equals 4 or 10a minus x. Rearranging, I'll end up with 10a minus x equals 4x or 5x equals 10a or x equals 2a. So I found out that at 2a, the gravitational field is 0. 
So if I go a little bit towards the left of this, this guy's gonna take over. So if I call this point, the point from which the object is shot, let's call that point as A, then all I need to make sure that this object starts from A and reaches point P with zero speed. If it can do that, that will be the minimum it has to reach here. Okay, so we can now calculate what is the speed required by using conservation of mechanical energy. We can say the potential energy at A plus the kinetic energy at A should be equal to potential energy at P plus kinetic energy at P. We know that this should be the minimum speed, so kinetic energy at P can be zero. If it's more than zero, it will still make it, but, if it's l but at least it has to be zero. Just can reach over here and be zero. What's potential energy at A? Well, potential energy for this guy is due to these two people. It's one due to this planet, another one due to that planet. Well, we know the formula for potential energy, right? So that's going to be minus G. I'm going to first start due to this planet. It's going to be 16m into small m divided by 2a. Then potential energy to this planet. That's going to be minus G into m into small m divided by this distance. Well, this is 2a and this whole thing is 10a, so this has to be 8a. I hope you can see that. This is 2a, this whole thing is 10a, so from here to here must be 8a. So that's going to be 8a. That should be equal to potential energy at p. When this object has reached p, it'll have potential energy, or oh, oh, sorry, this is, a, this is a kinetic energy, half mv squared. Now potential energy at P, well, due to this guy, the potential energy will be minus GMM divided by X, which is 2A. And due to that guy, is going to be minus GM into 16 times M divided by this distance. Well, that's 8A again. And all I have to do now is solve this bad boy, okay? which I have to do in the next page. So, or maybe I can just shift this up and do it. All right, so let's see. I'm going to, okay, let's simplify this. You have two, um, uh, this goes eight times, and you have eight, and it goes two times. So if I take the common denominator of eight A, get a minus 64 g m m minus g m m that should be equal to if I take the I'm sorry there's a plus half mv square that should be equal to minus g m m minus uh, 2 4 4 g m m divided by 2a. I hope that makes sense. I will have to continue next page anyways. So let's see. We will get... Okay, I'm just going to write that over here. Okay. So let's solve this now. Mm, let's take all the common stuff out from here. I get minus g m m divided by a out. What remains inside is an eight plus one by eight plus half m v squared. It's minus g m m divided by a. Get a half plus two. <clears throat> so m cancels minus g m divided by a into 64 65 divided by 8 equals half plus equal to minus g m divided by a there is no m m has been cancelled times 5 by 2 so half v square equals minus g m by a pull out that 5 by 2 this goes on this side and it becomes positive but since I've taken a negative out I'll get a negative again 65 divided by 8 
So that ends up being minus GMM by A into 5 is a 40. Oh no, or I can just put that as was it 20? 20 minus 65 is minus 45 divided by 8. So 2, 4 times. So we have square root of 45 gm divided by 4. That's the minimum speed with which the object has to be thrown.